Welcome back to episode three. We have defeated the Carolina Hurricanes and the Washington Capitals, both in Game 7s, as we won the President's Trophy this season, as we are marching to Crosby's fourth cup, hopefully, and Patrick Marlowe's first. Off to the third round we'll go. We will not be wasting any time. Gino is back to 100%. Who is this Toronto team we are facing? I have a good feeling I know four big faces on them. And we know the four-headed monster. There it is. William Nylander, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner playing amazing. Nylander could step it up, but he can awake at any minute. There's no introduction needed for Matthews or Marta. They're playing amazing. Andreas Janssen with John Tavares on that third or second line with Kasperi Kapanen. Hi, buddy. Hope that doesn't come to bite us in the ass this round. Zach Hyman, Alex Kerfoot, and Jason Spezza making the third line with Nick Patan, Dennis Mulgan, and Ilya Mikheyev, a.k.a. The Soup Man, rounding out the fourth line. On defense, we got... Morgan Riley, Tyson Berry, Jake Muzzin, Travis Dermott, Justin Hall, and Cody CC rounding out the top six. And in that course, Frederick Anderson is playing amazing. With backup Jack Campbell, who is not playing amazing. But good thing he's not the starter. Healthy scratches, Pontus Auberg, Pierre Engvall, and Kyle Clifford. This is going to be a tough series. I know after two game sevens, I think the Penguins are honest to God. I think they underperformed the last series. This one, though, I think it's going to take a lot. I Toronto should have had 50 wins this season. As you are back. How'd you play in the playoffs? You got a minus two. That's excellent to see. Free cola. I would love to bring you back for next season, buddy. I love you. Love you, buddy. But we must focus on now. Game one against the Toronto Maple Leafs in Pittsburgh. First period. It is, remains scoreless as we lead the shot clock. 11-9. Second period. Zach Ashton Reese will start off the scoring with Patrick Hornquist following right after. Dennis Mulgan cuts the lead to one. Gensel gets it back up to two. Then Muzzin gets it back, cuts it to one again, even on shots 20 to 20 or 22 to 22. Third period read. This is a close nail biting game. We need some assurance goals here as the opposite happens. Andres Janssen is going to get what his second or third of the playoffs. And he's going to tie this game. Power play opportunity for Toronto as we kill it. Power play opportunity for us as they kill it. So we trade power plays. And the waning minutes will we be seeing overtime hockey? Who is going to be the hero of game one as we lead the shot clock? 35 to 27. Power play opportunity for Toronto. Hey guys, it's biting us in our ass right now. Casperi Kapanen. Former Penguin scores. Who took that penalty? Who took that penalty? Crosby. Buddy. You can't be taking that penalty. That's a stupid penalty to take. Oh, uh, come on. That was a dumb penalty take, Cappy. As Marlowe goes down. Team is dropping by flies. Thank God we got the depth to patch up for it. Looks like Simone will go in. Uh, who am I going to give that boost to that second line? Well, Bukes at congratulations, buddy. You're playing awful. <laughs> You're playing God awful, you know. I'll do McCann. <laughs> All right, hopefully McCann and Mulligan can, can click. So, game two, down one nothing in the series. Can we even this up, 
try to get back home ice advantage. First period scoreless. Again, scoring in the first, first period is apparently for chumps. Chumps, I tell you. We lead the shot clock 14 to 7. Second period, Brian Dumoulin is going to get the one and only goal so far of this game. Jake Gensel is going to fire right back, though, and get us up by two. As the waning minutes, power play opportunity for Toronto. Big kill there. Can we kill it again? Yes, we kill both of them. Big. Another power play. Can we kill it? Another big kill. As we were dominating the shot clock and Hornquist with the empty netter. Utter annihilation of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Maybe not annihilation, but we played an excellent game. Let's repeat it, boys. Let's repeat it. Game three. Vegas goes up by two. Oh, this could get awkward if Oh, you might already be thinking. Game Game three. First period. Scoring in the first is not for chumps anymore as Malkin. Another power play goal. Another. Zucker and Gensel will make it a three-nothing game. 19 to 8 on the shot clock. Second period. Malkin. This dude's a Beast on the power play. McCann, another power play. Kapanen will at least get a power play. Prevent the shutout, but our power play is rolling tonight. As right as I say that, short we give up a shorthanded goal. But don't worry, we score on the power play, Sidney Crosby. Our special teams are... They have kicked in. They have kicked in. Remember when I was complaining about not getting power play goals? Not anymore. Four in one game. How many penalties did Toronto even take? Actually, that was a goal scoring summary. No. You know, just check all events. So what? They took a minor, delay game, another minor, high stick, interference. Jesus Christ. They are undisciplined. Yeah, Toronto was beating us power plays. Thanks, Toronto. Vegas goes up 3-0, preparing to sweep the Avs. Oh, this is going to get weird. This might get weird. Game four in Toronto. Can we get up 3-1? First period, Brian Dumoulin is going to score. Is that his third goal this series? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Austin Matthews, however, is going to tie the game. Toronto leads the shot clock, 13 to 10. Well, we're going to score twice. Evgeny Malkin, not on the power play. Surprising. And Chris Letang, as we lead the shot clock now, 26 to 21. Going to third period with a power play opportunity, and we blow it. As Dennis Malkin is going to cut the lead by one and cap and then ties it. Big power plays for Toronto here. Can we kill him? Yes, we can. All right. Come on. Big goal right now. That's not what I wanted. John Tavares. But Sidney Crosby on the power play. We make this up. Sidney Crosby again has showed up. Can we ride this? Can we ride that goal to victory? Yes, we can. As Ted Ors Blugers gets the assurance. Empty netter. Wild third period leads to us getting up by 3 to 1 with perhaps a Stanley Cup. Final appearance, maybe, as Vegas will be going on to the next round. Connor Sherry, welcome back, buddy. What, I believe Simone's in your spot? Simone's in your spot. Alright, in goes Sherry. Bukestad goes over there. Can's played very well. Bukestad has not. Tanev is playing well. It's that first line. That first line has, ever since I grilled Crosby that first series, he's been absolutely incredible since then. Defensively, we're playing pretty good. We're playing really good. Johnson's minus four, but... As long as he just picks it up. Matt Murray with the 905 save percentage. It's improving. I'll say that at least. Tristan Jari. Seven saves. Cool. 
Yeah, he's not really seeing the net that much. Can we punch our ticket into the Stanley Cup Final? Game 5. As Latang and Gensel won 2 as they lead off scoring. As we lead 2 nothing coming out of the first. Toronto leads the shot clock 11 to 10. Second period, we hold down the fort 23 to 18 on the shot clock. 20 minutes left. We are 20 minutes left. Morgan Riley is going to make that. Going to cut that lead by one. Can we hold on? Can we hold on? Come on, we need one more assurance goal. Guys, yes, Connor Sherry does exactly as I say. Okay, with the empty netter. As the Pittsburgh Penguins will be going to the Stanley Cup Final in year one. But we have to trade a soul for a soul to punch our ticket in. How close is Marlow? God, who knows? I don't think we'll be seeing Hornquist for the rest of the playoffs. Simone's going to go in for Bukes, and Bukes that will take that first line spot. Actually, I want Bukes in the first line there. Yeah, I'll leave Bukes out here. Hopefully, Crosby can get him going. Hopefully, not defense, holding down the fort, holding down the fort. Matt Murray, 908, keep climbing with that, buddy. Crosby with 25 points. If, knock on wood, we win the cup, Crosby's looking for his third con Smythe. Now, what does this Vegas team look like? What is this Western Conference champion look like? Because I know one player on them. As it is the strangest lineup I've seen in this series. First line is Alex Tuck. Nick Cousins as the first line center playing out of his mind. And Mark Stone. Second line is Jonathan Marcheseau. Paul Stastny, and Max Pacioretty, who, oh my god, 16 goals and 6 patches wants a cup. He wants a cup bad. Third line, William Carrier, William Carlson, and William Riley Smith with 15 assists. Not a single goal, though. Fourth line is Cody Glass, Thomas Nosek, and Valentin Zykov. Defensively, we got Nate Schmidt, Shea Theodore, Alec Martinez, Nick Holden, Braden McNabb, and Derek Anglin. In net, Robin Leonard, and good old Mark Ajé Fleury himself, the flower. Be the first time we'll see him on the other side in the cup final. Healthy scratches are Ryan Reeves and Chandler Stevenson. And John Merrill is injured with that horrendous mustache. God, it's awful. Seriously, how, how do you look in the mirror and say that's okay? But don't worry, he's going to come back from injury, score three hat tricks, and Vegas sweeps us in two. Because that's how the game works sometimes. Game one in Pittsburgh. And it starts off as a mixed bag. It's Alec Martinez leads the scoring. Malkin gets it back. Alex Tuck puts them back on top. Well, Simone, with four seconds left, ties the game. Second period. Crosby and Malkin. Malkin with another power play goal. This dude knows nothing other than power play goals. We lead the shot clock 27 to 18. Can we lock this down? Can we get one more for assurance? Vegas power play. We kill it off. Good job, boys. Another Vegas power play. And extended, and we kill that one off as well as Vegas is crawling their way back on the shot clock. All right, guys, come on. Come on. Lock it down. 
And it looks like we will do that. Game one goes to the Pittsburgh Penguins. We are three wins away from holding Lord Stanley himself. Game two. Can we go up by two? Patrick Marlowe is back. Which... You just scored that really big goal, buddy. So it doesn't feel right if I were to take you out. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to leave Simone in. He broke last game with that big goal. I'm going to leave him in. Game two. Game dos. Nope, not shots. Goals. First period as Max Pacioretty is going to get a goal. Finally, it took him long enough. Dominic Simone will tie it as I made a good decision, apparently, keeping him in the lineup. But Nick Cousins, because I insulted him being a first-line center, decides, hey, screw you, and gets a goal. As Vegas leads the shot clock, 14-6. to six. Second period, Connor Sherry, power play goal. We tie this game at two. Vegas leads shot clock, 27 to 20. Power play opportunity for us. Can we connect? No, but Zach Ashenreese will get a goal right after as we get up three to two. Another power play. Can we connect? No, but Riley Smith gets it right back. We got three three game. As we are halfway through the game, well, not the game, the third period. We got five minutes left. Will we be seeing some overtime hockey? Vegas last minute power play. Oh boy. As we will be going into overtime. Short a man. That doesn't bode well. Overtime. We kill it off. Thank God we kill it off. As it is a battle back and forth right now. But Evgeny Malkin, the hero of game two. Puts us up two to nothing against the Vegas Golden Knights. Game three in Vegas. Hard crowd to play in front of, but we're going to do our best. We are going to do our absolute best to make this a three nothing series. First period. Max Patch ready, power play goal. Nate Schmidt, power play goal. That hurts a little bit, but we've been. It's about time we were on the receiving end of it when we've been dishing them out. Second period, Riley Smith is going to get another goal right as I insulted. The dude can't score. He is scoring like a god now. Alex Tuck, power play goal. Our penalty kill is collapsing at the seams. <sighs> yeah, this looks like this game might be a wash. Pedersen at least stops the shutout, but I don't think there's Brian Rust. Gives us hope. Edmonton Blue, three goal lead with three minutes left. Can we get... Oh, shit. Teddy Blue. Come on, come on. Come oh. A vigorous stampede within the last nine minutes to try to get back, but our crappy penalty kill really bit us in the ass in this game. As Vegas will take game three. Game four. In Vegas. Can we prevent them from evening the series and go up 3 to 1? First period. Alex Tuck, power play goal. Our penalty kill has been atrocious. Second period. Sidney Crosby's going to tie up the game. Shot clock 18 to 15. Us. Come on. Power play opportunity for us. Long power play as we do not connect. But Sidney Crosby will get in. They'll get a separate power play goal. So we are up by one, Sid the Kid. Well, he's not a kid anymore. He's like 32. It's Sid, Sid, Sid the Gramps. Sid, 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 Sidney. Daddy. Oh, yeah, this game is going a bit slow. Okay. Five. As Cody Glass is going to tie this game. But Dominic Simone! Oh, my God. 
god, and Crosby gets that trick. Simone. Brandon, if you're watching this, how does this make you feel? Please leave a comment below how this makes you feel. That Dominic Simone is activating God mode when we need him to. Game five. We're going back to Pittsburgh. With a chance to hold Lord Stanley. Now, let's see. Yeah, I've already done this. Okay, good. Because just in case, we might need to jump in. Actually, let me do something real quick. Just in case, it is true, and we need to jump in and watch. Lord Stanley himself. I'll go true broadcast. I honestly can't remember what's the difference. There's never been a Stanley Cup one in Pittsburgh. It's always been on the road. Can we change that? Game five. One win away. First period. Jared McCann, power play goal of Getty Malkin, goal, 2 nothing lead, 9-9 nine, nine shot clock. Pacioretty is going to cut it to a one-goal game. Powerful opportunity as we start the third, and they kill it off. Power play opportunity for Vegas, 5-on-3, and we kill it. Power play opportunity goes back to us. We are trading penalties left and right. As the clock is waning, Jared McCann... Biggest goal he might score in his career. Riley Smith. We got a nail biter on our hands, folks. John Marino with an empty netter. And it looks like we might be seeing the Stanley Cup be lifted in year one. Year one. One. As long as we can just know we're up by two. Just hold these last few minutes. 29 set. Oh, that's cruel. All right, face off one by Penguins. Back to Johnson. Johnson. He is going to take the puck up, flip it up to Gensel. Throw a shot on net. Leonard makes a save. Crosby rushes the net. We got a wild crowd. They know what's about to come. There it is. There's its majesty, Lord Stanley, getting ready to be careened. That was... Oh, crap, I forgot to put in Marlowe. You know what? Oops. My bad. All right. Big face off. As it's tied up, Nate Schmidt's going to take the puck. i throw it up to someone I can't read. I believe that was England. Up to that stone or marsh or so. I can't tell. Jake Gentle is going to take the puck. Latang's going to throw it up. Riley Smith's going to take it in. Pressure defense. Oh, big save by Murray. Dukes that. And you have it. Pittsburgh Penguins are Stanley Cup champions. Year one. Oh, it is already a success. You know, I honestly believed we were going to lose round one. When I saw game seven against Washington, I just got flashbacks from 2018. Which I know that was a game six, but oh man. It's going to be so sad when half this team leaves in the offseason because we can't afford to pay anyone. That looks nothing like Jack Johnson back there. That does not look like Jared McCann. And as the con Smythe goes, of course, to Sidney Crosby because you know that. Played really well, to say the least. 
Oh, man. Out comes the Stanley Cup. Here she comes. Your 2020 Stanley Cup champions, the Pittsburgh Penguins. First cup won in Pittsburgh. Ever. In their entire existence. They have five Stanley Cups to their name. Now six. This was the first one in Pittsburgh. As that is Sid's fourth Stanley Cup. Who is he handing this off to? That is that is going to go straight to Marino. Hey, congrats to the rookie. His first cup. Yeah, Marino's going to toss that off to, what's that, Tanev? Yep, good old Tanev. Good job, buddy. Well-deserved to all of you, except maybe Jack Johnson. I kid, I kid, love you, Johnson. Bask in it, in all of its greatness, Tanev. Now your contract doesn't look as bad. Still bad, but not as bad. You got a cup to show for it. Matt Murray with his third cup. As ridiculous. Her goalie, his age. As the cup photo is coming around. Last time we'll see ha like a third of these faces. Because, <laughs> yeah, some players are on their way out of town. But yeah, three stars go to McCann, Murray, and Malkin. Well, that was pretty epic. I see this as an absolute win. Let's sim a few days. As Hornquist is going to come, just best lines. Doesn't matter anymore. As, yeah, Bukes adds back. Doesn't matter. And it looks like they're still deciding who's going to win the Calder Cup in the Miners. As we have not gotten notification of who's won. There it is. Penguins, Stanley Cup champions, and the Utica Comets with the Calder Cup. Let's look at awards. Pittsburgh Penguins, Stanley Cup, President's Trophy, and the Prince of Wales. Absurd. Patty Kane with the Art Ross. A heart goes to Crosby. Wow, the heart goes to Crosby. I thought it would have went to Kane. Like, excluding playoffs. I mean, Crosby played well, but like, so did Malkin. you think they would split the vote. Tang with his Norris. Patty Kane with Lady Bing. Calder goes to Kako. Conn Smythe to Crosby. He is raking in the awards as Vasilevsky with his Vesna. And the Jennings. Bill Masson goes to Will Butcher. The Kings coach Lombardi. Lombardi wins Jack Adams. Brian O'Reilly wins the Selkie. Ted Lindsay goes to Sidney Crosby. So he, the players even thought he was the best player in the league. And if getting Malkin with Maurice Richard, notice the lack of Connor McDavid. Strange. On the AHL, Utica Comets, as the Bridgeport Sound Tigers led the league. And here are all the division winners, as it was the Utica Comets and Tucson Roadrunners. Uh, Josh Hosang, he will win their scoring title, and he will also win their MVP. As the Willie Marshall, that will go to Oliver Wallstrom. 
So will the Garrett Memorial. Uh, oh, I think it's John Gilmore, if I'm correct. John Gilmore was the best defenseman down in uh, down in Rochester. Well, up in Rochester. Kako Kakonen is the best goaltender for the Iowa Wild. Utica comments, the MVP goes to Camp something camper. Osang with the Fred Hunt Memorial and Gustav Olafsson with whatever that award is. And the goals against lowest goes to Conan. So, no Wilkes Bear. Fine with. Trust me, I'm perfectly fine with. No Wilkes, we all uh, what? Hurts a little bit. Just a tad. I should have read what that said with the cap going up, but oh well. Nashville will win the draft lottery. Minnesota will get number two. Detroit, number three. Montreal drops. Ew, that that hurts for Montreal. They drop down to fourth. Columbus to fifth. Ottawa to sixth. That hurts a little bit for them. Good thing we aren't rebuilding. Don't need to view the draft class. Yeah, our first pick is in the third round, but... Depending on uh, what we trade Jari for, because spoiler alert, we're probably trading him. Yeah, we might end up with the first trap. We'll see. The best way he could have retired. Patrick Marlowe retires a champion. Didn't play a lot, but he gets the Holden Cup. Well deserved. Which he could have did in real life, too. They, not even with the Penguins, just in general. He deserves a Stanley Cup. As uh, Henrik Zetterberg, Marin Gabrick, the obvious players. Is Why were you on the San Diego Gulls? That's strange. Andrew Ladd hangs up the skates. That's a big relief for the Islanders. That comes up for for it's Drew Stafford, Matt Molson, uh, Jason Garrison. Joel Lundquist, the Forbidden Lundquist. Yeah, not too many big names. No, not anyone surprising. I guess other than Marlowe. That's not, that, yeah, that's kind of... Marlowe and Ladd, those two are kind of surprising. I think Marlowe may have one year left in him. Or at least he was going to try to. Did we lose a scout? We did down in Wilkes-Barre Scranton. Cool. Well, not a scout, a head coach. All right, so we got some interviews. So, why were these players not scouted? Well, I guess that's what I pay for. Put my faith in the scouts. <laughs> Welp, I'm an idiot. Mistakes were made. So yeah, we're not going to have a first-round pick. Avery Oda. I am going to look at a couple of these guys, though. The, the ones I can know. Similar style, Patrick Marlowe. Parker Claremont. Claremont. If we end up getting that first round pick, but I want Avery Oda. Sounds very interesting. No Gunler. Commodore. Henrix Lapierre. Okay. Ooh. Dord Foy. Very interesting. We could trade him and go get him. Good old American kid. As we are going to go down. Swear is our first pick. Jesus Christ. This is not looking epic. <laughs> Finally, it has shown up. Funk. Jeffrey Funk. That is a rock star from Jeffrey. Jesus Christ. I can't read. Gregory Funk. Absolute champion. Fill in the wave. Gunthier, Bugle. Typical names down here. Oh, Jan Mi Misik. Jan Misik. I, I know he's a top six potential, but I kind of don't want to draft him for that reason. It doesn't feel right. 
then again, I've never really seen the guy develop that much. Oh my god, is that Bosnia and Herzegovina? That is Bosnia and Herzegovina, if I'm correct. That's kind of hot, not gonna lie. There's Thomas Vilk. Alright, you know what? Let me start, stop dealing down with this. Gems, we got some gems. Of course, yeah, the number five guy's a gem. Yeah, thanks for telling me. The Polish kid, Kenny Slaney. Slani? Slani, uh, I'll figure that out. Pretty good, good leader. Uh, five years out, so you're pretty much a project. Um, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk to S Slani. Slani, let's talk to Slani. What's up, buddy? What is up? What type of guy are you? What type are you, guy? Kenny? I don't intend to get bent out of shape. I'm very loyal, well-rounded. Okay. Okay. How about your play style? How do you play? So you are a playmaker. Interesting, interesting. Okay. What are your weaknesses? So you're not really a physical player. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we'll be drafting Kenny. Yeah, I, I don't know why I'm going Hopefully he is a low elite. Hopefully. Well, I'd love if it was a medium elite, but we can't have what we want. Philip Bailey. Right shot defenseman. Interesting. Oh, and Ekmark. Vitaly Glibov. Elliot Ekmark. Are you real? I know that's a weird question to ask, but... I might be deterred if he is. We're on top to Philip Bailey. Phil Bailey. You know, what do I want to ask him? What, what type of player is he? Your weaknesses. And crapshoot. Hey, buddy. What's up, Philip Bailey? Nice to meet you, pal. All right. How do you play out there? Defensive defenseman. Interesting. Very interesting. That, that could fit our scheme very well. Because we only have Doomlin for that. So if we can get another, develop, another defensive defenseman into the system, I think that's pretty good. What are your weaknesses? What are your issues? You don't have good senses. That deters me a little bit. That deters me a little bit. What type of guy are you? What type of guy are you? There, and I get along with everyone. Friendly guy. Okay. Philip Bailey. So. Huh. I think I'll still keep him pinned. I mean, we'll, we'll be taking a shot in the dark with him. But. Power forward. Hmm. All right, let's talk with Gregory. Greg. Hi, buddy. What are your strengths? Good skater. You know, typically it's the opposite way around. Typically that's a weakness for them. So I'd like to see that. I like see you being a good skater. Gator, okay, what style player are you? You're a grinder. Interesting. So you're a defensive player. That's a player with good skating. That's an interesting combo. Alright, what do you like in the locker room? You are high stance for ice, so you're very big on winning. Hmm. Okay. See, so yeah, it looks like 
Hmm. Very interesting. Well, those are my interviews. Those are the interviews as here we are with draft day. We're going to wrap this up here, but we're going to do a quick progress report. How's everyone develop? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Crosby's up to 97, which is absurd. Malkin's up to a 95. Gensel's up to a 91. Latang is up to a 90. That is god absurd. Murray's up to an 87. Connor Sherry's up to an 86. Yeah, you're probably walking this offseason. Jason Zucker didn't go up. Schultz up to an 85. Russ stayed the same. Hornquist started aging. What did I say? Jari, not really up by a little bit. McCann develops a little bit. Bukes, uh, Bukes that, yeah, Bukes that went up a bit. Oh, Marino getting a nice little bump from natural development. Nice to see. Ashton Reese, Patterson, same thing. Yeah, Rodriguez, you're probably gone. Tanev went down in overall, which I don't like that. But Bluger went up. Johnson started aging too, which I don't like that either. Down the minors. Casey DeSmith hasn't changed, but Sam Lafferty has developed. He might make the roster next season. You know what? Justin Almeida, good development for him. Anthony Angelo, good development. Graham not good development, but these two are kind of a bit older, so I don't know. I don't think they have good chances of making it. Jan Drogs, good development. Like to see that. But Terry, Volteri, Pustinanen. Pustinanen. Yeah, we'll go with that. Good development, but I don't know what's your longevity with the team. Nathan Laguerre, good development. Uh, Bellarive, good development, but same thing goes with you. Pierre Olivier Joseph, good development. Good, good, good. Good. I don't want that to be any morale development because sometimes I'll fool you. Casper Bjorn, quit. see it right there. It's morale, not growth. He's just really happy, which makes him think he's playing well, which that could be a bit of a red flag. Emil Larmy. Uh, the Oreo, ooh, not, not much development down here. Sam Poole and that doesn't look good. Ugh. You need to take some more steps down there, buddy. Down there in junior, Philip Hollander didn't grow at all. I think he's on his way out. I think he might be trade bait. But, yeah, I, I'm going to wrap this up here. Amazing episode. Yep. Yeah. Uh yeah, we're we're Stanley Cup champions. Let's go win another. It's Pittsburgh tradition to make back to back Stanley Cups, so now that is our mission. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for the draft next episode as we proceed to throw a wrench into this oil well oiled machine. Good night everyone. Love you all.